Bless up electric culture family. Today we're going to look at installation of a CW2 model electric culture antenna from the fertile current on some peppers that are on a trellis. This is a design that I modified from Crystal Flu, Justin Crystal Flu's um, design for using the electric culture antennas on a trellised crop. This is a north to south running crop. So we're we'll using that model. I believe in his book, it's like page 13 or something this design is on. And I've modified it just using some modern equipment, some, some T-post clips that work really well. It makes it really simple and easy. I call this a floating flux line because the line is not running through the soil. It's floating throughout the side or either side that you choose to install it in of the plant or you can do it on both. So I'm gonna do it so you can see what I'm talking about. And I'm using the CW2 model that we make. This is an aerial terrestrial model, we call it, because it's specifically designed to be installed at lower heights. Our CW1 model, which I have an example of here, this is basically a scaled down version. It has all the same components, except the top is obviously different. Here we have the free electron collection um, wire arrays, and that's, that's to be placed at a high altitude. So to offset that knot, being a factor when you mount lower, we're going to use piezo current with the tensor rod. Piezo coming from the Greek word to push or push, referring to the pressure that's put on the copper when it's twisted together. Things like crystals, metals, and bones all produce piezoelectricity. So we're going to utilize that principle in the CW2, and other than that, all the same components are the same, are the same as the CW1, and it is core filled with paramagnetic rock dust as well. So we're going to go over here on some poblano peppers, it's actually a mix of peppers, and um, get this installed. There's so many options on how to attach your antenna to a T-post or a pole or any scenario. In this case, these trellis applications are usually short term, so you're going to use them on the crop and when that crop is done, take them and move them somewhere else. It's unlike the high mounted pole uh, and ground wire combinations where those are going to be installed for indefinite amounts of time or forever. Um, so this is going to be moved around, so the installation can be pretty semi-permanent. Uh, this is a very inexpensive, cheap, and quick way to mount it. I'm just using a piece of gray PVC to insulate it against the metal pole, the antenna body that is, and a few zip ties to attach it all together. Zip tied the PVC to the T-post, and then the antenna body to the PVC. This is just installation and to give it somewhere to mount to. So next we're going to be, I'm going to video this, but I'm just explaining ahead of time. I'm going to run the, the floating flux wire, which is 12 and a half gauge galvanized steel, zinc coated steel wire. And I'm going to run it up through these T-post pin lock insulators. And I found these and they're so ideal for running these lines because they're going to clip to the T-post. As I'll show you, the line will run through the horizontal gap and then it's got this little pin that goes in and secures it down in so your line doesn't come out. So they're insulative, they give it a channel to run through, and I just put all these on there ahead of time in like three minutes. So they're very cheap and very available T-post pin lock insulators. We're just using some modern innovations and cheap equipment to install these electroculture systems to utilize the best of both worlds. So with the antenna body secured to the T-post, our telluric brass rod is facing south. We'll adjust it again at the end in case it shifts during installation. I'm going to take this brass coupler. This is for 14 to 8 gauge or 8 aug wires. So it works on this 8 gauge wire coming out of the antenna body perfectly. We're going to slide it on, secure it. I'm gonna, this is my 12 and a half galvanized, 12 and a half gauge galvanized. I'm going to go ahead and come from underneath. And feed this wire up to my antenna. We will couple it
to the antenna. So as you can see, the galvanized wire is coupled to the antenna wire, running through those pin lock insulators vertically, like a channel. Now we're gonna start our horizontal wire flow. And this is going from south to north at the end. I'm gonna to try to show you down here in these peppers how it's gonna work. So it's gonna go through the channel and then the little pin lock comes around. And we'll slide right through there like so, securing your wire. And we just go to the next one. Go to the next point. Take the pin lock. Secure the wire. We're here at the end of the line. Do one more of these. Get the grass out of the way. There we go. Now I'm gonna prepare my termination rod and I'll show you that in one moment. So we're here at the most northern point of this uh, trellis section of peppers. We've got our galvanized steel line that we ran through these pin insulator clips. We're gonna cut a cut a little bit, cut it, cut a little extra at the end here, just in case we make a mistake or something. I've got this little piece of dowel, some pre-drilled holes. You can go through, up around. Got kind of a pre-dug out little spot here, just so we can get this ground as deep as we as we possibly can here, within reason. And we just pound that down to give it the ground, the negative point, fill it back up with the soil. Make it disappear. And that's the negative point in our system at the furthest northern point. And again, this is modeled after Justin Crystal Flew's north to south trellis application for electroculture antennas and uh, just using some modern equipment to make it streamlined and easy and quick to set up.